Your cloud application has a lot of data moving over many parts of the public and the private internet. But what if you want a heavier hand in defining exactly what paths your data can take? In this episode of Cloud Networking, we'll talk about how to define traffic routing between networks. Stay tuned. One common problem with networking is that you need the ability to link networks together without allowing the data to be visible to every user in every location. For example, let's say company A and B share a common wall in a building and each have their own private networks, but then wish to connect them together without giving up their current network configuration. This would mean making both networks use different IP address ranges and set up a router that connects to both of these networks to pass traffic between them. Traditionally, setting up a router for an on-premise network requires a fair bit of heavy lifting. You physically assemble these things together to build interconnectivity between users and the applications they used. Implementing all of this could take days or even weeks. And as the network grows, the associated management and cost to operate it also grows disproportionately larger for your company. But with Google Cloud Platform, software-defined routing means every VPC network uses a scalable distributed virtual routing mechanism. GCP routes define the paths network traffic takes from a VM instance to other destinations. These destinations can be inside your VPC network, for example, in another VM, or outside of it. Even though some routes can be applied selectively, the routing table for a VPC network is defined at the global VPC network level. Let's take a closer look. Every route consists of a destination and a next hop, which are IP addresses or ranges of IP addresses. Traffic whose destination IP is within the destination range is sent to the next hop for delivery. Each VM instance has a controller that's kept informed of all its routes from the network's routing table. Each packet leaving a VM is sent to the next hop of an applicable route based on a routing order. When you add or delete a route, the set of changes is propagated to the VM controllers using an eventually consistent design. This means that you have simplicity and centralized control, a high degree of automation, built-in security and encryption, and high performance. Now, there are two types of routes on a GCP VPC, system-generated routes or custom routes. System-generated routes give you a default route and subnet route. The default route defines a path for traffic from your VPC to Google services and the public internet. The subnet route defines a path for your traffic into your VPC to each subnet. This is how VPC peering works. VPC peers always exchange all subnet routes. Custom routes mean you create static routing yourself or dynamic routes using Google Cloud Router. Let's walk through static route setup. Here I have two VPCs set up in US East and US Central. I also set up a VPN gateway on both sides and created two IPsec tunnels between them. I have an Ohio server in the US East VPC and a warehouse server in the US Central VPC. But I still can't ping the internal IP of the warehouse server from the Ohio server. I need to create two static routes to enable traffic to be forwarded into the tunnel. We have default routes created for each network, but we're going to create custom static routes. First, let's create a route from East to Central. Click Create Route. Specify a name for the route. Select an existing network where the route will apply. The destination IP range is the central subnet internal IP range. I'll skip priority for now, but you would use this to determine routing order if routes have the same destinations. Select a target instance tag or leave it blank to apply the route to all instances in the network. Select a next hop for the route. I'll select my VPN tunnel and click Create. Now I'll create another route for traffic from central to east. And voila, I can now ping the internal IP of the warehouse server from the Ohio server. Keep in mind that with static routes, you have to create or maintain a routing table. And a topology change on either network requires you to manually update static routes. Also, static routes can't automatically reroute traffic if a link fails. But static routing is perfect for small networks with stable topologies. There's so much more I can say around routing, but it's clear that Google's virtual routing is what connects all the moving pieces between subnets in a VPC, and even to your local network on-premise. Stay tuned for more networking end-to-end, -end, and remember, optimizing your network means freeing up your bandwidth.